right, so this video, I'll do a little bit of a drawing exercise and how it uh, connects to some interesting aspects. It's um, compass and straight edge to begin with. And essentially, so we'll be drawing a clock face and then using that to create a timepiece. But it also, to measure time, you really need to measure length. And here the meter or the metric system, uh, which very, well, we'll get to that as we do the, as we make a pendulum and how it connects to the ancient Egyptian cubit, for instance. But it's also a good point to know, so for instance, Vitruvian Man uh, by Da Vinci, which is based on this uh, ancient book on architecture by uh, Vitruvius, talks about the, a, a, a temple should be based on the proportions of an ideal man in that the proportions of a body should be in sync and these proportions should be built into the temple. But um, given that, for instance, uh, in measurement, what's called a span. So if you take from the tip of your pinky to the tip of your thumb, that's a span. But that should also be the same distance from your chin to the top of your crown. So that would be a head. So from the chin to the top of your crown, that's called a span as well. And just like the cube, it is based from the elbow uh, to your tip of your finger. That's a cubit. But we also have um, now a hand. So from the base of your palm to the tip of your longest finger should be the distance from your chin to the top of your of the of the hairline. So that's also shown in Vitruvian Man that uh, man is the measure of all things. But we measure distance, but we also can use that to measure time. And so, for instance, uh, like a, an inch, which was called an uncia or an oncia, should be the width of your thumb. Now, there are 12 inches per foot, but there should be 16 fingers. Okay, they're pretty, that's very, like, so four fingers or, or the palm from, should be equal to three inches. Therefore, 16 fingers should be 12 inches. So a foot is 12 thumb, but it's also 16 fingers. That's the basis of these ancient systems. And ancient Egyptian, the cubit was divide, a cubit was seven palm or 28 fingers. This is quite an ancient practice, but so measuring time, measuring distance, and in your, in your normal drawing kit, you should also get you know these two set squares. Now, this one's a very important one, because this in itself holds many keys, but in, especially this 30 degree angle, because this is a very important feature into measuring time. And if you can get a meter, and so for instance, it'd be a good idea to know now, for instance, uh, my fingernail, or I think my pinky, is one centimeter. So now let's assume, you know, the, the cataclysm has happened, everything's been wiped out. Well, how do we begin again? We don't have all these features. Now, it's quite easy to make a compass. This is one I could have made a while ago. You know, just with, you know, so amongst the flotsam and jetsam of the wreckage, it's not too hard to make a compass. Uh, ideally, you'd want to be able to find a, a ruler amongst the wreckage, but if you don't, your pinky nail should be about a centimetre less mine. So it's good to have an idea of what your particular measurements are. And so beginning with that, I could reinvent the foot by understanding that I've already measured my palm, my four fingers, and I'm, you know, we can basically reinvent the foot uh, just by using these types of features built on your body. So but let, let's just draw a clock and then I'll show you how you can use that to make an actual timepiece. Camera's slipping on the tripod. All right, so begins as with all things, the construction line, compass and straight edge geometry, and the vesica. And so we'll just draw a clock first, which incorporates some very interesting other important symbols, such as the um, Maltese cross, as well as the Templar cross. And so I want to make sure I'm going to fit it all in. So I'll start with a... point on the construction line and we start with a vesica we don't change the compass setting at all and so now the vesica is two circles with the 
center of a second on the edge of a first. So there we have the vesica Pisces, the, the piscis or the fish, the Pisces, also called the mandala. Now, oh, geez, I hope I've got it. Yep, there it's all gonna fit in. So now I could just draw a circle here, but, but I'll, I wanna, I'll, so we just gotta follow this uh, window. Okay, so now to draw the seed of life, we just carry this around. So wherever these circles intersect, we just carry on through. And there we start to see the seed of life emerging. So it's six circles around the seventh at the center. Let's do it in camera. Okay, so now we have the seed of life. Now to, uh, I'll, I'll fit that in. Okay, so now we want to do is put the compass point on the center and adjust it to the uh, edge of a circle there. So now we can enclose that seed of life right, inside a And so now we have the basis for drawing a clock face. You can get as artistic as you want with it. I'm just gonna do the basics of it. And so we already have these pedals. So we already have one point here, one point there, it's a darker pencil. And we can use these pedals to divide the circle up into six. Okay, so now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and well, so we've already divided into six now. I could do a Star of David design, but what, uh, well, the seed of life is already divided into 12. And so, for instance, if we go through these points, Actually, it is necessary just to illustrate what I want to. So now we'll do a star of David, so or the hexagram, six-pointed star. And so what I want to do is I'm going to skip one, and so I go from one. Actually, I'll use a darker point just to separate it. And again, we're going to skip one. And we do the same again. Okay, so now we have an equilateral triangle and we also have those three points remaining. So you just join those together and you get yourself a hexagram or Star of David. And this will then give us the construction points we need to do a 12 pointed star and then we'll do a 24 pointed star and then you can use that as a basis for you know be as artistic as you want with it to draw a clock face but we have the basics here now if I was to wear these the trough of those well we already have those points built in there but I just want to Actually, we don't even um, I do need to mark them out. And so we already have those points, for instance, through the center, and that would line up there, from there through the center, and it would, so we're dividing the circle up into 12 units. But you'll notice it also goes through where those triangles um, intersect. So there's a few different ways to find those construction points.
Okay, and before I should make look, so as we drew the Star of David there, equilateral triangles, which gives you a 60 degree angle, and you'll see this is one of the, why these particular tools are also valuable, because we also have the 60 degrees, for instance, built in uh, to these 30 degrees and 60 degrees. Now, because we're dividing it up into 12, the circle 360 degrees divided by 12 is 30 degrees. I'll change the color. And so now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and the same rule again, we're gonna start here. We'll skip this one, we go there. Same again, from here we're gonna skip that and go over there. And once more, so now we have another equilateral triangle. And we also have, we'll create a 12 pointed star once I'm finished, so we need to do that from here to there. Okay, so now we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now, I'm just going to be very dodgy with that for the moment, just to, because you can, you know, be as uh, artistic as you want, but what we have is a basis, so we have a 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, so we have our clock face there, so you can take your time and do different designs, but to you know, design your own clock face, depending on those aspects. But it's also important to note, because for instance, from six, from seven to six, gives us a 30 degree angle, and there we see again, the standard set square in your drawing tools. Now this 30 degree angle is the really important one to create a timepiece from a uh, clock face. Now of course there are also 12 signs of the zodiac, uh, 12 months of the year, so it's a nice uh, uh, series of connections you can do there. But now the important point is this 30 degree angle, and we also have the 12 pointed star, but now to make a timepiece, I'm going to take, use a clock face to make a timepiece is we need see how these these will also divide up so I'm not going to do all of the 24 but for instance if I wherever these this trough is between these lines just again by drawing through the center I could then divide the circle into 24 units but now I'm going to do it on the opposite side here and again through the center. And I'll highlight that because it is this 30 degree angle which we can use to create a one second to turn a, a, a clock face into a timepiece. So there we have. A 30 degree angle. Okay, now this is more of a uh, longer way to do it, but I wanted to illustrate with the clock face. And so now we have 30 degrees. And we also we have the 30 degrees, but we also cut to 30 degrees. So this would be 15 degrees and with that we can make a working clock face and a working time piece, a very accurate one. And uh, we could use other units, but we'll be using the centimeter because again, it's the one centimeter. So if I take my thumb, my uh, pinky nail, multiply it by 100, I get a meter. 
and there we have a clock face. Uh, I'm in a, a very accurate timepiece. I'll do that in the next part. But yeah, it's with this construction, with these angles, and with a unit of measure, we can also now uh, create a, a device for measuring time. It's quite easy, something very easy to do. And so all you really need to do is Cut out your 30 degree angle. And with that 30 degrees split down the middle to give you your the basis, now we can create a timepiece. And of course that comes from the clock. Okay, that'll be in, I'll put that up in the next part.